We want to start with Joy Reid. If you've got a TV, you may know who she is. She's the host of a weekly show on MSNBC. She's an icon on the progressive left. There is not a single fashionable opinion that Joy Reid doesn't have or isn't happy to denounce you for not having. She's a total star in Brooklyn, of course. But she wasn't always this way and didn't always have these beliefs. Back in 2006, Joy Reid sounded like a very different person. On her blog at the time, she opposed gay marriage, mocked gay people, and people she thought were gay. Now, given where she is now, these are obviously highly embarrassing opinions to have had. When the posts were discovered, she had a couple of options. She could have just apologized. People change their opinions all the time, and good for them. Why wouldn't they change their opinions? America has changed, is changing. So an honest explanation would have been just fine, and we would have defended her in that, of course. But that's not what Joy Reid did. Instead, she lied about it. She claimed she never wrote those blog posts in the first place. Someone else did. She said she'd been hacked. Sinister agents, perhaps employed by Vladimir Putin, somehow broke into her blog retroactively to add the remarks. It really sounds like an MSNBC segment, part of what they run every night. She said it was a disinformation campaign waged by whom? We don't know. Shadowy forces. That was her explanation. It was a crock, a total crock. And we know it was a crock because Reed's blog posts were archived by other websites, including the Library of Congress here in Washington, all the way back to 2006. That means in order for her claims to be true, which they're not, the secret hacking plot must have begun at least 12 years ago before anyone knew or cared who Joy Reed was. That's a lie. It's a childish lie. You'd have to be a moron to believe it. Yet she's telling it. Here's the interesting part, though. NBC News is endorsing all of this as true and trying to convince other people it's true. Yesterday, the network circulated a vague report by an extremely odd person called Jonathan Nichols, who says he's an independent security consultant, whatever that is, in which he affirms Joy Reid's ludicrous fantasy. Obviously, he offers no evidence. Keep in mind that NBC, which is passing this out to other news organizations, claims itself to be a news organization. And news organizations are not supposed to lie. That's rule one. And yet NBC executives make a habit of lying. They lied about the Access Hollywood tape a couple of years ago. You'll remember that tape was leaked by NBC to David Fahrenholt at the Washington Post, who was a college friend of NBC News chief Noah Oppenheim. The goal in that leak was to help Hillary Clinton just two days before a presidential debate, and it helped. NBC later promised to reveal how that tape was leaked, but of course we haven't heard because they never told us. They lied instead, and they're still lying about that. NBC also lied when it ran interference for sex attacker Harvey Weinstein, which it did repeatedly over a long period. You'll remember that network killed Ronan Farrow's investigation into Harvey Weinstein. He had the goods, and yet NBC claimed that Farrow hadn't nailed down the story. By the way, he went and sold the story the next day to The New Yorker, but NBC said it just wasn't ready yet. Another lie. Now NBC is helping Joy Reid lie once again, and almost nobody else in the media is saying anything about it, except Michael Graham. He's a columnist for the Boston Globe, and he joins us now to tell us what exactly is going on. So, look, I just want to be completely clear. I am okay right. with people changing their views. My views on almost everything have changed. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's a sin in that. And to come out and say, yeah, I thought that, I don't think that anymore, is totally fine. Why would NBC endorse and ratify and disseminate what is so clearly a false explanation from Joy Reid? Look, maybe they're just suckers. I mean, look how they've fallen for the Russia Gate story where every <laughs> single leak they go, this is how we got him now. We got him. I mean, there's apparently nothing. They know nothing about how the Internet works, apparently. I think when Hillary Clinton said that she cleaned her uh, her uh, server with a cloth, I think they went, oh, OK, with a cloth. That's how she did it. So maybe maybe that's it. But there is something you, you make a very good point, Tucker, that there's something odd about the willingness of NBC to stand by a story that is so ludicrous. It reminds me of a time in the past when a, another network stood behind by Dan Rather and when the New York Times said that that bogus story was fake but accurate. And so what's happened, I think, is that there are people who are in the, quote, news business who just realize they're not really in the news business. They're in the political advocacy business and Joy Reid is an amazing political advocate. She has a lot of fans. She's very powerful. And right. I, I want to read a, a tweet. I, I don't want to get the words wrong. I apologize for my phone. But this is from a Clinton staffer who tweeted out today and then blocked me, so I had to look it back up. Make sure you're evaluating this Joy Ann Reed situation through an intersectional lens. She is one of the most important black female voices on TV. Oh, God. 
Go Thanks. Oh, wait, wait, that's but an wait, 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 lucky fact lens. But, but just look, lie, this, she's just lying. She's lying. Obviously, nobody went in the way back machine to 2006 because, aha, uh -huh, one day I know this person will be on cable TV. I'll get them now. It's nonsense. But intersectionality, really? Is it so bad? Hmm. But why? I wonder why. I mean, most people, if they work for a news organization and got caught doing something, and right. they went to the boss and they said, I have an idea. Let's make up a patently ludicrous lie that is provably untrue, <laughs> the boss would say, right. how about not? Why don't you just say you did it, concede you did it, admit it, and most people, fair-minded people, will kind of forgive you and move on. Why would NBC further besmirch itself by tying itself to something so obviously false and stupid and insulting to the rest of us? Uh, because there's a hardcore group of people who tune in. Uh, you know, it's the week, she's on the weekends, so it's you know kind of like bonus revenue, and they are there once again not for news. They are there to have their biases affirmed. And let's face it, Tucker, that's a problem across the left and right media. It happens a lot, and so that's why they're there. And so my Twitter feed today was full of people who said, "I'm gay. I'm liberal. I don't care what she said. She hates Trump." She's really good yeah. at hating Trump, well, and if you hate is. Trump enough, you can do whatever you want, and all sins will be forgiven. Man, I'm not a Joy Reid fan. I mean, to put it mildly, she's attacked me. I, I think she's a race baiter. But I would have given her mm -hmm. and any honest person a pass um, if she'd been honest, which she's not. By the way, I should uh, tell our viewers that just a minute ago, the Daily Beast, which is an online uh, blog, kind of a mediocre one, uh, has announced it's putting a pause on Joy Reid's columns. Apparently, she writes for mm -hmm. them, not surprisingly. Anyway, Michael Graham, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.